More than six months has passed since the launch of Blue Origin's new Shepard rocket ended in failure. No humans were on board the vehicle because it was conducting a suborbital scientific research mission, but the failure has grounded the new Shepard fleet ever since. Notably on Wednesday, a company sales exec said the company expects to return its new Shepard rocket to flight by the end of 2023, but they won't release details of the failure investigation. This raises the question why? What really happened to Blue Origin? Let's talk about it today in this episode of Alpha Tech. We're sure to know about New Shepard, the only Blue Origin active rocket at the center of its space tourism and microgravity research business. Pitifully, it's now been grounded for almost six months after an anomaly. The rocket's single main engine failed about one minute into the flight at an altitude of around nine kilometers as it was throttling back up after passing through the period of maximum dynamic pressure. At that point, a large fire erupted in the B-3 engine and the new Shepard capsule's solid rocket motor-powered escape system fired as intended, pulling the capsule away from the exploding rocket. The capsule experienced high g-forces during this return but appeared to make a safe landing. We are looking to get back into flight with New Shepard by the end of this year, Arian Cornell, the Vice President of Commercial and International Sales, said at a conference in Washington this week. Strangely, the company expected to complete a technical review of the New Shepard failure by December of last year, a Blue Origin executive told the Washington Post in November, but Cornell declined to provide details on where the investigation stands. The U.S. Federal Aviation Administration, which regulates commercial launch site safety, is overseeing Blue Origin's investigation and must approve of its findings. Because we're doing this in coordination with the FAA, I can't get into those details, Cornell said when asked about investigation delays. I'm not sure if we're going to release the details. It's something we have to coordinate with the FAA. However, FAA spokesman Steve Calm, in response to the Reuters inquiry, said the FAA does not prohibit commercial space operators from publicly discussing information about open mishap investigations. The FAA asked companies to coordinate the release of factual information for awareness and to ensure any mention of the FAA's oversight role in the investigation is properly portrayed, Calm added. Back to three days after this accident with the New Shepard 23 mission, the bipartisan leadership of the House Subcommittee on Space and Aeronautics sent a letter to the Federal Aviation Administration calling for a thorough investigation. In an interview later that month, the chair of the subcommittee, U.S. Representative Don Beyer, a Democrat in Virginia, urged Blue Origin to be transparent. I'm heavily in favor of transparency, and I'm hoping that the FAA comes through pretty quickly with this, Beyer said. I would strongly encourage Blue Origin to be as transparent as possible because that builds trust. It doesn't have to be overnight, but it would be nice to keep people updated on the progress they're making. The company has not heeded this advice. Founded by Jeff Bezos more than two decades ago, Blue Origin has largely been non-transparent in its activities during its existence, only rarely offering glimpses of its work through carefully choreographed public relation campaigns. Bezos almost never speaks with space journalists about the company's activities. This is continued with the new Shepard 23 investigation. To date, Blue Origin has said nothing publicly about the failure, its investigations, or the next steps. For the next flight, a question is whether this will be an uncrewed or crewed mission. At the time of the accident, Blue Origin was flying two different New Shepard systems. The RSS HG Wells capsule was flying science missions on Booster 3, and the newer RSS First Step was flying crewed missions on Booster 4. Booster 3, which launched the failed mission in September, was the company's oldest operational rocket, making its debut in December 2017. The company has used its newest rocket, Booster 4, exclusively for human launches. It has some modifications from Booster 3 to qualify as a human-rated rocket. Blue Origin could choose to fly a crewed mission on Booster 4, an uncrewed test flight on the rocket, or debut a new booster with modifications made as a result of the learnings from the New Shepard 23 accident investigation. The NS-23 mission was the 12th New Shepard flight that carried research payloads either as a dedicated research flight or as part of the New Shepard vehicle testing program. These flights have carried more than 100 commercial payloads. Such a dedicated payload flight will be less prominent going forward. 
We expect that in the near future, the coming year, suborbital tourism will dominate our flights. That's according to Gary Lai, the chief architect for New Shepard at Blue Origin. He said that in February, predicting that Blue Origin would support about a couple of dedicated payload missions a year, the same as it has, even as the number of private astronaut flights grows. The company's offering new research opportunities, and that includes flying payloads on New Shepard's propulsion module, something he said can be done on both research and tourism flights. While there's less room on the propulsion module for payload, he said there will be an option to allow payloads to be exposed for sampling the atmosphere or even deploy instruments. Another new option will be a reduced gravity flight, where the crew capsule is spun after deployment to create lunar gravity conditions for a few minutes. Blue Origin is under contract from NASA for such a flight, tentatively planned for later this year. Blue Origin is looking at options for human-tended experiments, he said, such as replacing seats with experiment racks. It's also working with NASA about flying government researchers and astronauts through the agency's suborbital crew program. The company is separately studying updates to New Shepard, although Lai said that changes would focus on operations. The customers probably won't see a huge difference, he said, with Blue Origin instead working to reduce the turnaround time between flights. That's always been the ultimate objective for New Shepard, to learn how to make spaceflight routine. Well, do you want an expensive seat on New Shepard? I definitely don't, but I'm thinking about SpaceX's Dragon. One of the biggest differences between the two spacecraft is that the SpaceX Dragon is capable of orbital flight, while the new Shepard's only designed for suborbital flight. The ability to achieve orbit enables the Dragon to perform more complex missions like resupplying the ISS, conducting scientific experiments in space, and launching satellites into orbit. Besides, while New Shepard is still trying to hide its failures, Dragon sent eight crews into orbit. In a little more than two years, SpaceX has surpassed the total number of astronauts launched into orbit by China, whose human spaceflight program dates back to 2003. And in the time the Crew Dragon's been operational, it has exceeded even the Russian Soyuz vehicle in terms of the total number of people flown into space during that period. SpaceX Dragon has safely returned the U.S.'s capability of human spaceflight, which had been lost since the space shuttle retirement. Had Dragon not been available, NASA would have been in the uncomfortable position of relying on Russia for crew transport amid the Ukraine war. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget, share your ideas in the comment section below. Your support motivates us to create more quality videos. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.